Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? I hope you're well and I hope you're having a great day. So today I'm going to start the bodywork on the car and I'm not going to film a great deal of this because I am absolutely not an expert in car bodywork at all. I'm a complete amateur and to be honest I don't want to be filming stuff and making mistakes and then people copying what I do. I'd rather just make the mistakes as I go along. So uh, I think, well, I don't deliberately do it the wrong way. It's just, like I say, I'm no expert at it. And, and I'm sure some people will watch this and go, oh God, no, you've done that all wrong. So like I say, I think I'll just give progress updates as we go. So I, I hate doing body work as well because it is 99% prep. Um, the 1% of laying the paint on is probably the most satisfying bit, but if you don't do that 99% prep, you don't get that ratio right to begin with, um, you just end up messing it up. So let me turn around sh turn around, and I'll show you what I'm working on. So the first thing obviously is the rear of the car and there was far more to do on the back than I first thought there would be. Um, I thought it was a little bit of a repair on the valance and maybe one of the closing panels, but as you'd have seen in the previous videos, there was a hell of a lot to be done. So that means there's more bodywork to be done on the back. Um, pretty much the whole corner on both sides has been replaced. Um, so I've sort of started blending that in with filler. Probably get two or three coats of filler on there. Um, and same again the other side. One thing I've picked up from watching other people's bodywork videos is when putting on filler, um, not to put filler on over any of the paint because you get a a reaction line around the edge of the filler then or you can do especially I think when painting cellulose over the top because it reactivates it so the the filler goes I do it onto bare metal and I make sure that the the line of the filler doesn't go into the actual paintwork itself I don't know whether that's right or that's wrong but as I say that's what I've seen anyway at the front here I've got a couple of small repair sections these are my own mistake these these are where i dented the wing upwards a little bit trying to get it in because i was hitting from underneath so i've dollied them back down and then just put a skimmer filler over the top so they should be they were high spots they should be low spots now um and then i've cleaned up the corners here because we're going to be seam sealing these corners so again uh both sides so <clears throat> i'll be back with uh, I don't know what the next step's going to be. Progress update, but I'm sure there'll be a few hours between now and the next one. Okay, like I said, oh, I've done loads off camera. So I've seam sealed everywhere. So seam sealed here. We filled over the join there. Uh, what else we done? All the fronts all seam sealed now. Uh, this has just got white primer on it at the moment. It's just... Yeah, I just want to put something on it rather than leaving it bare metal. All around the back here is filled. It's not perfect. I probably need to do a bit more filler here. Um, but I'll do that later.
Right, so as you can see there, I've bled up all the brakes um, and I'm doing the tracking now. What I was actually doing was, I've done the other side already, I took the track rod end all the way off, I cleaned up the threads on the tracking, um, on the steering rack, that obviously just makes it easier to adjust. And then you've got to start somewhere, so basically you don't want to start with five turns on that side, 10 turns on that side. You want them, even if the tracking is completely wrong, you want them on the even, even amount of turns. So usually on minis, from my experience, it's between sort of, I don't know, eight to 12 turns. So I've set this side on 11 turns. I set the other side on 11 turns. And obviously now we've just got the tracking gauges on here. I borrow these from Mark there. They're, they're okay, they're not, they do the job basically. Um, obviously, you know, if you go in and have a four wheel laser aligned somewhere, it's probably gonna be a little bit more accurate than this, but these seem pretty good to be fair. They're just a bit fiddly to get set up. They've got obviously like spirit levels on them. You have to get them set up perfectly and you need, you need a nice flat, even floor to get it all set up nicely. Now, what it basically does is it, it has a small laser in this end, it shoots it off, it bounces back off the mirror, and then you adjust a dial here to get the dot in the middle. So once the dot's in the middle, you can then read what the tracking is set at currently. So that is, this is in degrees, degrees and minutes. So that is about, uh, it's less than one degree toe out, it's about, 45 um, degrees towing out. So that means, uh, so towing out means the front wheels are doing that. Towing in would mean the front wheels are doing that. So what we need to do to get it to tow in some more, this is the back of the wheels where the steering arms is. We need to lengthen the track rod ends to put it in straight. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, that's not a long way out to be honest um like i say 11 turns is roughly about what i, I found minis are so we're going to do we'll probably do one turn either side lengthening the or unscrewing the track rod ends so we'll go back to 10 turns and then we'll have a look again and see what the reading is on here now um each time you adjust it you want to roll it backwards and forwards a little bit just to get it all to settle back down again uh, and then basically it's just a case of adjustment but the main thing to remember is whatever you do on one side do the same on the other um, and then you won't have any steering pulling or anything like that typically when you get steering pulling it's because one one side has got eight turns on a track rod and the other side's got 12 and it's just all a bit out of kilter so um so yeah, I set them even and uh, and go from there. Uh, I'm sure someone's gonna ask what tracking setting you're gonna, what you're gonna use. I, I just set minis parallel, to be honest. Um, I, I can't remember what we set Bolt to, the, the sort of track car, but parallel works for me. Right, so the first adjustment, one turn either side, went from towing out 45 degrees to towing in 45 degrees. So it went the same amount in the opposite direction. So that was one turn either side. So it doesn't take a genius to work out. It needs half a turn either side. So I'll back off them. Uh, so I will be shortening the track rod ends by half a turn and we should be there or thereabouts then. Uh, another little tip, if you're gonna do this, you wanna paint or mark a line on the um, on the steering rack arm so you can see how much you've twisted it, obviously. There 
we go, bang on parallel. I'm sure some people will comment and say, oh, it's, it's meant to be, you know, a very slight bit of toe in or toe out. Um, I can never quite remember. Front wheel drive cars, I think I meant to toe in and rear wheel drive cars toe out. I can't quite remember. Um, back in the old college days, that, that is. But yeah, front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, it makes a difference. Um, but these gauges are, are not really accurate enough to go down to fine detail, I think. Um, as it's showing parallel and that's, that's about good enough. Any other thing we got to remember now is to tighten up the lock nuts on the track rod ends and cable tie up the uh, rack boots if you've had to slacken them off to twist the rack around. Right, I think we're good to go. So I've got all this uh, plastic sheeting. It's actually a new type of masking. It's not paper, is it? It's it's pre-taped uh, masking, PVC, whatever it is. Um, I think it was about 10, 11 quid for 25 meters, which doesn't seem too bad. Uh, I, I've used the paper stuff before. I actually prefer the paper stuff, although this, seems to cover or it's much bigger it's probably more cost effective using this but um yeah so next job is just to get the gravitex on like i say it's a bit of a mess mask up goggles um i might get some extra lights here because we're we're spraying black so that'll be hard to see um but yeah it's just a mess so you gotta get it masked up nicely it's also important to layer it up don't try and get it all on in one go probably want to do two or three layers of it. Sorry, what a numpty I am. I forgot to turn the camera on. Uh, sorry about the background noise. I've got an extractor fan going as well. That's the first coat on there. Like I say, it goes on quite nicely. You just don't want to layer it on too thick. Although this, the U-Pole Gravitex is pretty forgiving, but I've used other under seals before and if or stone chips and if you layer it on too thick it all just cracks so we'll give that well it's pretty cold in the garage actually probably it's not ideal for be paint for painting it's 8.1 degrees um so maybe i'll put a heater on that we'll give it half an hour to dry and then we'll get a second coat on there and then that should be fine you can see i've masked up the top here um I don't like stone chip on that outside visible bit there. I don't mind it underneath, but um, I think certainly when I'm looking at seals on minis, I think when you wonder what the stone chip is hiding when it's laid on thick on the outside. So just personal preference, I, I mask off that outside bit and it'll be done in body color. Right, considering how cold it is, that actually dried pretty quickly. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Uh, I'll keep that one for the outtakes. <laughs> right, take two. <laughs> now, now that's had a good half hour, 40 minutes to dry. <laughs> um, 
yeah, it's ready for the second coat. It covers pretty well, this stuff, but uh, there are still bits where it's a bit patchy, so second coat should have that done, I reckon. Right, so that's our seals and the underside, this side, all stone chipped U-Pole Gravitex. And then body coloured. And like I said, the outside bit I've done in body colour, there's no stone chip on that. I just think it looks neater. Um, yeah, it's looking good. Looking good. The next bit, I need to take this front wheel off and we're gonna do the inside of the wheel arch. Right, so the next bit is underneath these front wheel arches. So obviously it's all been repaired up inside. It's all good now. Um, it's been seam sealed. It just wants a bit of stone chip protectant on there now. So we'll get that done. Not sure if I'm gonna repaint it body color. I might, I might do this flitch panel, uh, maybe a bit at the front, just so it looks all right when you look. Uh, under the arches Right and now that's the inside of the arch done as well Like I said, I've not gone mad on the body color. It's just had a Stone chip on there and a bit of body color down the bottoms um, Just so it doesn't look horrible when you look through the wheel arches or past the wheels so uh, Yeah I've just got to do the other side now can't quite remember where I got to with the footage last time. I think I was doing under ceiling seals and inside the arches. So now I'm just really into bodywork prep and I'm probably just gonna crack on with this and just film little bits as we go through because like I said, I'm absolutely no expert at bodywork. Um, I've done a couple of other things. I've put a new choke cable on there uh, and I've sorted out some of this wiring at the front here for the headlights because it was a bit dodge. Um, it still needs a little, I think it needs to be cut back a little bit actually because some of the wiring's not that great. So I'm prepping paintwork at the moment. Like I say, I'm absolutely no expert. Um, the back corners here have had, they've probably had two or three uh, goes at filling them because I sort of fill them rub them back and I can feel it's still not quite right but as I've done them now last sort of one I'm feeling quite happy with that now it's just had a a final sort of skimmo with very fine filler and at the front here as I was going over the panels again I found a couple of tiny little dents in the panels which I filled and then this is just fine filler which is waiting to be rubbed down now uh, and because the, the problem is I think it's hard to see but once you put gloss on there it will show up any imperfections hopefully I've caught them all I had the ones up up here which I put in myself uh, and I think these ones I don't know I must have just knocked them or they got knocked in transport but I don't want to paint it and then find them later the bit I'm not sure about now so like I say I'm absolutely no expert with bodywork at all um hopefully i'm making the right decision here so this scuttle panel here has got loads and it's really really thick with paint uh, and as you can see that's the metal work and then that'll be uh e-coat primer top coat so that's the original paintwork for the car and then you can see then it's got more primer and then another top coat so it's this whole car has been resprayed for definite but this paint along here it's not too bad towards the edges but towards the middle there is loads and loads and loads of paint on there i've had the da on there and it just keeps clogging up the da um i think it's just really really thick with paint 
So I reckon if I have any problems with reactions, it's going to be on that scuttle. So I think I'm going to take it back to bare metal. Um, what do you think? Am I, am I doing the right thing? If I'm doing the wrong thing, by the time this video goes out, I'd have probably already painted it and already had a bit of a disaster, unfortunately, because um, yeah, I'm working at quite a pace. So I think I am just going to go back to bare metal there. Um, surely there's got to be less problems if I go back to bare metal. And I've, I've bought a, a strip disc to go on the angle grinder to do that. Um, these will just take off paint without taking any of the metal away. So hopefully it should make light work. What I might find is there's a load of filler in there or something like that, but I don't think there is. So we'll find out. Right, so fast forward half hour, 45 minutes. As you can see, I've taken all the paint off. Um, MPI owners are going to hate me, aren't they? This is the original Scuttle, 40 years old. Uh, you can tell that because there's a chassis number stamped into it. Um, and there is no rot at all on that Scuttle. I tell a lie, actually. There's a tiny little bit down in this corner here, which will, which will just be cure rusted. Now, I am quite conscious when I was using that strip disc, every now and again, you could see metal sparks coming off it. I was trying to be as light as possible, but all these all these marks will stay in the panel. So that wants a good... I think what I'm going to do with that is give it a the whole lot, a very, very light skim of fine filler, and then kind of rub it back to pretty much nothing hopefully i'm doing the right thing the paint was really really thick on there really thick um and i just think I, I can't be doing the wrong thing can i going back to bare metal i mean that saves all doubt but it is quite amazing i mean obviously they they definitely built these cars better than they built the later mpis i mean <laughs> that that that's, that's 40 years old this scuttle panel and um yeah or it's 39 years old the car's 40 next year so there's my light skimmer filler it's very thin right so there's that scuttle done now um hopefully that'll be fine it's had uh two grades of filler so it's had p38 which is a fine filler anyway, and then I've gone over it with like an, an extra fine, um, not sure what it's called, I'll try and find the tube quickly. Uh, it's this stuff, one compound fine filler, but it's very, very fine that is. Um, <clears throat> so next thing I need to do is just get some etch primer on it because it's bare metal. Um, but I've also been prepping the rest of the car or rest of the front end as well So the next sort of bit of paint to go on will be primer filler uh, But I hate doing body work it's taken me I've probably been on this a good five hours doing that scuttle Prepping the rest. I mean I've done some stuff around the back as well, but it is just mind-numbingly boring <laughs> 